in my body. Mm-hmm. And like, and I don't eat as many carbs as, as I used to, but I still eat them. But I'm mm-hmm. finding that sugar. What are you eating? Um, well, he was just talking about how he was right. Oh. I, wish, I wish it was a hole. <laughs> 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 I wish. Wait, I saw you do it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> happy still. I'm happy still. Bitch, I'm in here. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, community, here's what's brewing today. Serena goes for 24. White people celebrating Black History Month. And ask your aunties when I knew I was Black. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Hey, hey, how's everyone doing tonight? What's hey community. Up? Hey community. And you know what? For everyone that's new that's listening, hey India, we know you out there. Thank you for yes. checking us out. I'm on Tikrell. The Carell. country. The, yeah, country. the country. The country. Because yes. <laughs> yes. you the know country. there's somebody out there like, oh, they shout me they out. Me, oh, girl. Really? They said my name. Hey. I just right. turned on this podcast just to see what they was about. They gonna shout me out. <laughs> hey, <laughs> India. Yeah, the country. Because we've seen them in the numbers. I'm like, okay, okay hey, that's dope. But uh, yeah. if you don't know our voices, I'm Auntie Carell. <laughs> I'm Auntie Jarrell. Auntie Dewan. Hey, and thank you for listening to Minority Report, yes. bitch. Yes. And subscribe and <laughs> download and share with everybody, you know? So thank you. But, uh, okay, we we already, again, had like half a episode before this. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're ready to talk. So, Jarell, what did you want to talk about first, though? Okay. Okay, so we got to talk about one of the two queens, yes. Serena Williams first. Absolutely. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but I had literally stayed up to one o'clock in the morning watching her. She looking so good, y'all. She looks she look, like she's her slimmed body, down. Look, yes, yeah. she slimmed down. Her footwork is there. She like got that new wig. Uh, well, okay, look, I think the well, first time, the first round, I don't think it was done because she had the hat on. And that's normally her signature where she like, I ain't putting no effort I, into I this. I feel like doing today. it today. <laughs> no. The lost, the left my pink lotion at a uh, check-in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, she, she's lost. And she was never a big girl, but she just looks a little slimmer which then makes her movement a lot better. Yeah. So she she might be coming for these hoes in the Australian Open. Oh yeah, she, she's, she's even been quoted because they, they just asked her her opinion about, you know, how things are going or whatever. And she was just like, I'm so glad that they decided to push the date back for Australian Open because, you know, she, she had to beg out of the last tournament because of her yeah. Achilles, which yeah. that, if you haven't had your Achilles, anything happened with your Achilles, count your blessings because that shit ain't nothing it to mess sucks. with. It's a it's a year of your life, <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. I ruptured mine at 23 years old. Still got the scars and the wounds to show for it. And luckily, knock on wood, everything worked out great. But literally a year of your life between yeah. surgery and a boot and then PT. And then I'm not even a professional athlete. So like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't making my pocketbook coins. Like, that's not my <laughs> livelihood. So yeah. It's crazy how like everyone on tennis channel, like in the tennis world, have been like, especially after that first round, they were like, um, I hope the girls are watching because the way she played in these first two rounds, if she's still up to the Australian Open like that, it's a wrap. They're like, yeah. It, yeah. it's an absolute wrap. The only person that I can see giving her a challenge is gonna be Naomi Osaka. And she's because she's good too. And she is looking really good yeah. as well too. You know, but the you know the Ash Barties, you know, the Simona Hallops that are just defensive players, the way they move is is just too quick. You yeah. know, you mm-hmm. you can't you can only defend so much power be, be, before it's just overpower it overpowers you, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll see. I, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited just to see tennis back. Like, and it's weird. I didn't realize Australia didn't have like COVID cases. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck we doing here in the US, <laughs> bitch? Like, we are tripping over here because they don't have a positive like uh COVID case from like 
someone within like saying, Oh, I was hanging with Dewan and got it that uh -huh. way in like mm -hmm. weeks now. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're COVID free. Yeah, they shut the borders down. They shut the borders down, I think, like two, three weeks. So they're like, nope, now that we're good, we ain't letting nobody in or I don't out. Blame them. They, I don't they mandate when they they do let some people in, but it's very, very limited. And there's a there's a limit of how many people they let in. But every single one of those, when you come into the country, you have to you have you they they quarantine you. Mm -hmm. There's no choice. They quarantine you for two whole weeks. They test you three times. You have to come out of pocket to pay for that. You stay in a hotel room for those 14 days. You cannot leave. They bring yeah. you breakfast, lunch, dinner. They make sure that you have Wi-Fi that's good to go. But outside of that, mm. your ass yo standing there. there. They, yeah. Yeah. I don't they're not messing around. No, they're not. And, I, and I'm glad yeah. that they actually you know, made the tennis players be like, look, bitch. Stay your ass in here. Stay, stay yeah. home. Stay home. And fucking go back, Djokovic. Thank you, bitch. Being like, oh, they should be like, they should like let us do some things. Not bitch, sit your ass up. I told y'all I was over Djokovic last year. I, look, I, I, canceled. <laughs> officially canceled. I saw his I face in the magazine the other day, and I was like, nope. I can't. Although I, can't do I do have now. to say this though. So, and I was watching tennis with Brandon. Hey, Brandon Jackson. Uh -huh. Um and. We were watching the first round, or it was the exhibition match in Adelaide. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And bitch, he was bulging the fuck. I know out. he was. So, like, we <laughs> yeah. were losers. Yeah. He was like, ooh. Yeah. I don't, I mean, the little thirst in me still comes out, but I I, I don't stay in him, but you know, I'm gonna I'm check out the bowl. I'm gonna <laughs> right. check it out. I mean, come on, I, I am mean, a gonna man. put it out there. We're gonna have to we gonna exactly. have to check it out. You know? Like I don't gotta talk to your ass, but I'm gonna look. <laughs> I mean, we have to do our due diligence as gay men. <laughs> look, if it's gonna look at me, I'm gonna look back. I'm exactly. Just, it's just like it's know. like it's like what's up, player? And I said, What's up, play boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited. Like it's Serena. Serena done changed. What you knew when she changed up the hair that she came in here ready. Uh -huh, like yeah. she didn't have the, the the more like natural look weave. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm going back to like the the weave of like 2003. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like you see these inches. <laughs> like, she probably telling the same wig. She probably like you know what? Uh, let's bring her back out. Oh, faithful. Let me let me get Florida. Let me get Florida Evans off the shelf. <laughs> She had to <laughs> dust it off. Yeah. <laughs> she put that thing on and said, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> she had to dust that bitch off. <laughs> but you know, I mean, this could this could be the this could be the year that she just blows, you know, blows all the records out. Like if, uh -huh. if she if she's if if what she how she's playing right now isn't any indication about how she's going to play when she gets into the, like the more intense matches. Mm -hmm. And by like the time this, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, and like, you know, like we know of Serena, Serena gets better as she gets more matches under her belt. Right. The perfect thing about now is she's literally going to be playing all the way up to the Australian Open. So when it yeah. starts, she's going to be fresh. There will be none of those cobwebs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. at this point, it's just going to be the stamina that's going to be the main issue. Her and stamina the, and, and her, mental, her mental game. The tournament they're at now is at the Australian Open grounds, it right? Is. Yeah. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so at least yeah. now she's getting used to how fast the court is. <clears throat> but it's just like the older she's gotten, though, the only thing, like you were just saying, Jarell, is that someday she just wakes out of bed and she feels 39. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. and those <laughs> no, are the days, all. right? You know, seriously, some days you're just like, damn, damn. Like, the fuck hit me. <laughs> like, how's that? Right? My, my neck, neck. <laughs> my back. Damn, damn my crap. <laughs> seriously. So that's the only thing lately yeah. is just like, she might be playing so well. And then she just has one of those days where she's just not feeling fresh. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping her dropping a few more pounds allows her to still feel a little quick on the feet and things like that. So we'll yeah. see. And by this I mean, time, by this look, episode comes out, we'll know the 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 um, who she's playing and all that stuff. But look, and don't we know how it feels once we lose a couple pounds? We feel couple, good. Oh, just, it's like yeah. I see that bitch again. What's oh. up? Oh. <laughs> and maybe that, tell me no. maybe that's why she got that wig back. She's like, oh let look. me get this wig back. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> okay. Let me get this good wig. <laughs> look, she needs to take her husband's wig. She says she likes it. Like I, I follow her stories, and she's the one that told him to grow her his hair. Really? Out. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm like, that's because she be snatching his ass up. Get your ass over here. <laughs> or holding him down. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> Lord, and speaking of the, the, the bedroom, y'all see whose uh, nudes leaked or whose sex tape supposedly leaked? Mm. Mr. Still Your Girl? I, I just saw that. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Eggplant. But Jarrell, what you say in the text message? <laughs> you need to find better lighting. <laughs> yes, I was like, girl. I was like, how are you saving this video to watch lady? You can't see nothing. Mm, you know, <laughs> but... You know, as before we dive too deeply, I do want to say that no it's intended. not okay to no one in this. It's not okay to share or right. leak people's videos, like especially news. Yes. Like that is illegal. It is not okay to do. Um, and I do feel bad for the woman in the video whose yeah. business is now out there because you know how the internet is. They, they gonna track her, her down and they gonna tag her and they gonna get her real quick. I mean, we saw the internet with the gay doctor. All they had is a nipple. Yeah. And they found his ass like that. So True. I just feel bad for her because everyone knows what's coming next for her. Yeah. Um, especially. I mean, she might songs. get she mm-hmm. might get a few like um don't say when you're at 33. I was gonna I was gonna say she might get some extra followers, you know. Her 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 social media game might just blow up, you know. I mean, she was doing a pretty good job, you know. She was like she said this ain't my first rodeo. But, <laughs> I know it looked like it looked like well, let me shut up. Well, Gabby was going for gold, okay. She was like, I'm gonna stick to landing. <laughs> And what was he mumbling the whole time? I was just trying to figure out. Mr. Mo- mm-hmm. Still Your Girl. <laughs> I bet the name is not my name. <laughs> That's what he was saying. He was mumbling his lyrics. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was, it was, it looked nice. I mean, and I agree. Like, it, it, you, and even before I sent it to you too, I was like, damn, I'm like one of those people that I'm sending this out and that's not what I want to do. But I knew it was probably going to be a topic of conversation. I mean, Dick 30 is Dick 30. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, what would you do? Like, okay, so what would you do if your news were leaked all over Twitter like Twitter like that? I'm starting to OnlyFans, fuck it. Like the second, <laughs> you, be like, okay, it is what it is. Let right, me at this, this point, you can't, it's, it's out there already. At this point, let me, let me charge bitches for it. As well, you, uh, you know, what would you do, Dewan? Probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't say a little something, something, a whole lot of something, something. So there's it's floating out there already. So it's like, it's you know, yeah. if, if it happens, it happens. I mean, I'm not famous, so it ain't like you know, anybody's out there checking for little old me and not right. little old me, but you know what I mean. <laughs> But if it gets out there, oh, it gets faithful. out there. Oh, faithful. <laughs> James Evans. <laughs> I agree. Like, I think what after, about a point, you? after a point, it's just like, it's out there. Like, that's not yeah. what I want it to happen. But now that it's out there, let me try to monetize it then. Shit. Yeah, like, either, yeah. either. And, and I don't know if I would, like, do an OnlyFans just to continue it. But, like, damn, now I'm going into porn career or something like that. But... I mean, make a T-shirt or something. I don't know. Like, uh, not a, t- a T-shirt. <laughs> it's you know, it's like, I'm ready. Look, when the Corona is over, I'm going to market days. It's gonna be all Girl, out you just anyway. Go, you gonna you see a booty a- hole on the front of the T-shirt, bitch? I iron on no, booty hole with, with, with hands right here, spread yeah, them open. Spread them. <laughs> But yeah, I would probably try to find a way to monetize it because it's like if y'all over here talking, like it was the number one trending thing today. Yeah. So it's like, if all oh, y'all talking about my dick right now, how will I get some coins from this bitch then? <laughs> that's the only thing. That, that, that's the only thing that would bother me. Like, if 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 there was a leak of, like, of that, if nothing came out of it other than the fact that I get fired from my job because, you know, like, right. I'm trending and right. now, you know, I'm working for, like, a public company and blah, 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 blah. And now I can't, be, you know, like... I would be I would be hurt if I ha- if I suffered financially, but right. you know, I mean, if if absolutely nothing happened, or if you know, I get a couple extra followers, so what? I don't exactly, know. it's like you see it, you see it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Enjoy. I agree. Right. <laughs> I get to live with it all day. Right. <laughs> You're welcome. 
<laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Are you guys doing anything, by the way, for Valentine's Day? Now that we talk about our body parts. <laughs> <laughs> right. The one, giving it away. That's what giving I'm it doing. Away, giving it away <laughs> to my hubby. Ow. Right. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. We're um, in New York. All of the restaurants have been basically closed. Um, we also had this like snowstorm um, earlier last That's week. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so there's still like a good two to three feet of snow on the ground or whatever. And, um, but we found out that they're open up indoor dining on Valentine's Day, which is a Sunday. So I already made like a little Like for here on out or just that day? Uh, no, it's for it's for here on out. It's 25% capacity, you know, so it's, you know, being responsible, whatever. You have to wear a mask anytime <clears> you're away from your table and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, as soon as I found that out, I was like, I'm booking it. I'm booking a seat. I, I need to get out of the house. Yeah. I haven't been out of the house in three days, four days, four me, days. Me either. <laughs> so I just, I want an excuse to get out. Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, the, one of the last times Corey and I ate out was Valentine's Day last year. I think the last mm. two times we ate out was Valentine's Day and then my birthday. Mm -hmm. And since then, <laughs> you're looking at it. But I mean, you guys have had a little different scenario because Atlanta been like acting like yeah. there ain't no Corona going on yeah, at so all. What? Literally, yeah. maybe for like two weeks. Like at the very beginning, they're like, "Okay, what is this? What are we doing?" And bitch said, fuck it. Okay. Hey, mm -hmm. we hey. turn up on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> like, and Jeez, everyone, said, and everyone fuck this detention. <laughs> it's crazy. It is. And like, everybody knows it too. Like, mm -hmm. every, like you see it on social yeah. media, but like, damn, you know, you know Atlanta. My, my mama was just there this past weekend. She went back with my aunties. I said, y'all high risk. Y'all in your 50s. I've already had it twice. I said, you know, look here, Rhonda. <laughs> I already had it you twice. Do you. <laughs> you do you. Okay. Like you big and bad. Okay. I ain't gonna tell you nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> she said I had it twice, bitch. Try me. What, what what's it gonna do now? <laughs> right. She ain't gonna be like she ain't gonna beat my ass. What? Right. I beat her ass. <laughs> <laughs> she said, That's I am resilient. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That is but no, so we're not doing anything. We typically don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, I've always kind of been an anti-Valentine's Day. I just oh, hate you're the... screwed on Valentine's Day? No, I'm not saying that I'm screwed. I just hate that people feel they have to have a day to mm. just to be kind and to love on that person. It's just like, it shouldn't have to be one day. Like, understanding r random flowers, you know, it's not going to hurt somebody. You know, if you random like little gifts of chocolates or thoughtful date nights and stuff like that. I I live for just doing that stuff all year round. On the so regular. Valent yeah. So when Valentine's Day come around, I'm just like, I'm saving my good shit for the, the non good days, you know, like you can get this. And plus they be jacking up the prices <laughs> that's it. on that day specifically. Like if you want to buy mm -hmm. if you want to buy like tulips that normally cost four ninety nine, them bitch is thirty eight dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, right. What? Right. Wow, so. I just looked this up. So do you know when Valentine's Day started? Mm -mm. The year 496. Like, not 1496. <laughs> not 1996. How did they track that? Really? So it says it was an old Roman festival called Lupercalia, or Lupercalia in the middle of February, officially, uh, the, officially the start of their springtime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. And it says it thought that as part of the celebrations, boys drew names of girls from a box. They'd be boyfriend and girlfriend during the festival, and some and some <laughs> and uh -uh. sometimes they'd get married. So they were boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> during the festival. So they was fucking during the festival. Mm -hmm. Then maybe they got married. After that. Maybe. And then later on, the church wanted to turn this festival into, of course, the church to it to a festival into a Christian celebration and decided to use it to remember Saint Valentine as well. So gradually, mm -hmm. St. Valentine's name started to be used by people to express their feelings to those they loved. Mm -hmm. 496, damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they've been <laughs> jacking up flower prices <laughs> for <Ever> millennia. <laughs> right. <laughs> damn. Okay. Damn. Day. All right. But yeah, we're not yeah. the biggest. Like, we'll probably, I don't know what we're going to do this year. Honestly, we, we haven't even brought it up. Um, last year, I think we went for sushi. So usually we might go for dinner or something like that. But mm -hmm. I don't even think we bought each other gifts in a while. I think we will do like a card and either probably eat at home or 
Yeah, I doubt we'll go. We were fighting year. last year. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the mountain skiing. It's like, it's like that's and. that. That's an LTR. <laughs> that's an LTR life. That is. <laughs> yeah. It's Sometimes you life. just gotta go through it. That's yeah. True. Yeah. Especially this year, still like seeing each other all day, every day. It's like, damn. It's like I'm seeing your ass again today. <laughs> Love you, boo. I tell you what, though. <laughs> I tell you what, though. I feel like 80 pounds lighter every single day. That old boy, we don't got to listen to him. We ain't got to hear him on the news. Like, it is just so nice just to be able to, like, live life again. Mm -hmm. I haven't even thought about his ass this week. This is the first time mm -hmm. I even thought about him this week. And it's interesting to, like, turn on the news. And I think I might have said last week where literally you see, like, other shit now like mm -hmm. right. oh in in italy today they did and you're like damn mm -hmm. or human <laughs> interest stories like oh yeah. let's meet donda who feeds the ducks in the weekend <laughs> right <laughs> you know? or like, oh, like okay, they talked about the lovely. snowstorm they literally talked about the right. snowstorm out east for like a day and a half and i'm like right. wow wow like there's wow. Yeah. other news out there but y'all hear this whole biden conspiracy shit by these fucking right-wing people being like Oh, how come you're not celebrating your president? Like, how come you're not like, you know, cheering him on for all these things he's doing? And people just like, look, bitch, he's doing his job. Sorry, we're not celebrating him at every right. goddamn day for everything. We don't, we don't worship our president for doing what he's supposed to do that in part. office. That like, part. What the fuck? This ain't, we, listen, we none of us walked around with the president's uh, name on our foreheads because we were wearing a hat. Like you that never hat? happened until this last person. So the fact that you got into your little cult <laughs> doesn't mean that we all need to do that. Right. Is, yeah. Keep that Kool Aid to yourself. <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> like I haven't even watched any of the 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 uh, impeachment shit. Like I, I just don't. Oh, has that started? I think it started this last week or at least a pre-trial or something i don't know okay. like i, I yeah. don't care I, <laughs> I don't either right <laughs> i mean I that's fine either. that they're doing it and i support that but mm -hmm. you know like I, I i i like i think i read an article like a couple weeks ago where they're saying if he does get impeached or whatever in the senate he doesn't get like the lifetime security. He doesn't get like the yeah, payments like and the, shit. So I'm like, okay, I like that. I was like, get his ass out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Cause we're the ones coins. paying for that shit. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So other than that, I don't care, but Leah, let's keep a few extra dollars yeah. <laughs> that he don't need <laughs> because he's got the 220 million that his followers gave him anyway during the- All those pardons. Right. So- <laughs> He got paid for the pardons, so he got his money. So mm. did, but- uh. <laughs> But it's Black History Month, everyone. And uh, Say what? what? I know, and black, 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 ow, ow, ow. And uh, what we wanted to do this year is just like kind of highlight people within the queer community that might not get enough shine. Obviously, you know, we're going to shine MLK. We're going to shine Malcolm X and things like that, and rightfully so. But there's some other folks that have had a, a, an awesome history within American history, because Black history is American history, thank you very much, um, mm -hmm. that we just want to give a little shine. And so today, the one we wanted to give a little shine in this little Black history moment is Gladys Bentley. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Gladys was born in Philadelphia in 1907, and she was taunted as a child for being an overweight tomboy. But in the few years, she had the last laugh in her trademark white tuxedo and top hat. I know that's right. The okay, 300 pound, right, she said, I'm stunting on these hoes. <laughs> the 300 pound gravelly voice singer and piano player flaunted her uh, reputation as a bull dagger or butch lesbian. She was a top entertainer during the Harlem Renaissance. She headlined the Cotton Club and the Clam House, where she openly flirted with the women in the audience. I know that's yes. right. Get it, girl. Yeah. She took popular songs of the time like Sweet Georgia Brown or Alice Blue Gown and added suggestive lyrics in her raspy alto voice, encouraging the audience to echo the chorus. The gender busting act was a sensation, making her one of the most beloved icons of the era. Uh, in 1928, she began a 20-year recording career, which sadly does not include any of her body uh, lyrics or lesbian references on, so they were checking mm -hmm. there. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, her marriage ceremony to a white woman in New Jersey was widely oh. publicized, expanding the reach of notoriety, but it also quietly set, up, uh, set her up for a life that would soon grow harsher. In the 30s, she headlined the Umbangi Club, 
I think I'm saying that right, Ubangi Club with uh, a chorus of drag queens to back her. But the decade of the Great Depression would severely uh, impact Harlem nightlife. So in 1937, she moved to LA where she was harassed for wearing men's clothing, though she managed to eke out a living working mainly in gay clubs over the next decade. Uh, the repressive climate of the 50s made it even especially tough for her um, for being a butch lesbian in the United States. Needing to salvage her career in 1952, Bentley published an essay in Ebony saying she had been cured of her le lesbianism and was now married to a man, though the effectiveness of her treatment and validity of marriage could never be verified. Mm -hmm. uh, a sad coda to what had been a life lived without compromise, Gladys Bentley, the living embodiment of hot Harlem in the 20s, unfortunately died in 1960 of influenza. She was only 53. Damn. So kind of a sad tale there, but it just kind of shows you that A, Black queers have been here, honey, living mm -hmm. our best lives. And yeah. unfortunately, <clears throat> and we've seen it a lot just in gay culture, where in the earlier part of the century, there was a lot of just queer culture. And come after that Great Depression, they suppressed a it's, lot of yeah. that. You know? I was just thinking about that because there is, you know, there's a lot of literature that's that's placed and, you know, bio biographies that are placed like in like the, the 30s, the 40s, the late 20s, 30s, 40s, and then the early 50s, specifically about Black lesbian women, um, you know, which is interesting because like, you know, there was like the Ma Rainey Bottoms, right? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which, you know, has very <laughs> strong uh, lesbian under and overtones. Yeah, yeah, all the, all the all above tones. Overt, <laughs> overt. Um, and then The Color Purple, um, yeah. which, you know, has really strong women of Brewster Place. Like a lot of these, um, like, stories of like black women have these really strong, you know, like queer um, subtext that's yeah. under, or just overt queerness. And you're right, you know, when the 50s happen, it was just like, damn, all that shit just got shot. I mean, it wasn't like, well, obviously not wide, widely accepted, but I think there was some kind of like, I don't know. Some like shift, honestly. And I think a yeah. lot of it came from white America, quite honestly, because during that same time, it's like when they had to flight out to the suburbs and things like that. So it's just like mm -hmm. they found ways to, again, culturally and economically shut down a lot of people of color in the black community. So they were probably trying to stay alive in this narrative or whatever they wanted to call it probably didn't fit up to trying to fit into the white narrative quite honestly <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's just like it is sad like you you just hear story after story like mm -hmm. that where yeah i was out and or uh, you know you kind of hear these i was out and then xyz happened in this time frame and like right. you said mm -hmm. i don't know what exactly but i think a lot of it is kind of intertwined with the white flight to the burbs honestly <clears throat> yeah Leslie, yeah, well, also need, internal, to also on internal too, though, because, you know, like we know within our own community, how That's Christianity it. runs very deep within our own community. So yeah. I'm sure this, the thought of being out back then, just getting it from back from both ends, you know, not being able to fully feel safe in your own community. Mm -hmm. So like, even then having to, you know, figure out okay, in my own community, who is still okay with my sexuality? Right. And then at the same time, having to do both of those with white people who are like, oh, that's a reason for us to do something harmful to you. So <clears throat> I just- I like how she imagine. had to go to Ebony even back then. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never go to Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we need um, Leslie, um, Leslie Ann Joy. Leslie, come on and comment on, I know, right? on this, our, our black queer historian. Let us know exactly. what's what's up, because uh, yeah, we we love hearing stories like you know like this, and you know it's just great to like be exposed to people that you haven't heard about, because we always hear you know this time of year about the Thurgood Marshalls and the you know the you know just the you, Harriet Tubmans and whatever, but it's really nice to be able to to hear these stories of of you know women and men and those in between who just chose to live their life as authentically as mm -hmm. they knew how damn social norms and right. mm -hmm. you know it's such an inspiration even today speak oh go ahead <clears throat> oh no go ahead i was just going to <clears throat> kind of segue into the the part that i wanted to talk about which mm -hmm. is like have y'all noticed how 
white people been trying to celebrate black history this year there's been an uptick <laughs> and the amount of white voices that have been trying to speak up given everything last year with black Lives matters you know as a lot you can see there's been more white people <laughs> who are like i want to be a part of the movement too and then i was speaking to gareth hey boo, hey, boo. um the other day and he was telling me about something that happened to him and it got me thinking about just how i've been noticing like some white people have been celebrating black history by telling stories of black people that they know and specifically of what they've done for them versus taking a moment to shine on and teach people about said black person and i've kind of found myself being triggered because of like i i get the intention mm -hmm. But it's almost like the only way for Black people to celebrate is if they're doing something for white people. Like the hero narrative of Black people saving a white person can't be the only thing that needs to be celebrated about a Black person. Wait, and I, I'm, I got confused. Are you saying that the white person is saying <clears throat> that the Black person did something for them? Yes, that's like the, that's okay. that, yeah, like that's what's so inspiring for them that is that they helped me learn to do this. So they taught me how to read a room, you know, or taught me about, you know, oh, how, how to read a room. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> someone has that's actually what, said that. We taught you. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, so. <clears throat> I just, I find myself being very ready to shut this shit down. <laughs> and I just don't know how to go about doing it without being like, cause you know, white people feel like they can get in their feelings when you talk about like, okay, you're not racist, but you're doing something that's borderline racist. How would y'all navigate something like that? Like, how do you tell a white person like, you're not, you're not uplifting us. You're talking about what we do for you versus what we do for the community or what makes us amazing just by simply who we are or, you know, like, but there's a difference. I, I would honestly maybe say it, but what I've almost consciously this year have done, even though I like to celebrate us year round because we're dope as fuck, <laughs> but specifically yeah. since we do have Black History Month, I honestly haven't even entertained anything outside of just literally celebrating us like whether yeah. it's the music i'm playing whether it's the articles and trying to research things i don't know and you know like the gladys mm -hmm. bentley's and things like that so i honestly might have to be like you know what you're gonna get a rain check check till march 1st <laughs> yeah she <laughs> you know on pto right now <laughs> because <laughs> Like, because I feel like a lot of times what happens in this month is we spend so much time entertaining what the white community is thinking about the month and us trying to educate them about the month <clears throat> that we're not even having time left to celebrate those that the month is supposed to be celebrating, <laughs> you know? So it's just like, time out. You're going to get it back on March 1st. I'll, t TBD, to be continued, <laughs> cliffhanger. But I'm going to consciously celebrate us this month. And if you don't understand it right now, I'll teach you later. But I, I don't <laughs> care, honestly. And and that's probably the first time in my life that I've thought that way, honestly. Because you know me, I don't delete no one on Facebook. I don't do any of that shit. Yeah, you be but doing this the Lord's year, work. But this year, I was just like, you know what? Like, I, I want to celebrate us. I want to find different ways to celebrate us, whether it be be obviously continuing to buy black owned businesses, putting out different stuff on our social about people that we might not know, or that might not have been as celebrated. So I could continue to learn and, and grow in my own blackness, because there's just mm -hmm. so much out there that's this, and we'll kind of get this a little later, kind of goes into my auntie, so maybe I'll save it. But it's just like, I feel like there's still so much that's hidden out there to be celebrated. And I want to celebrate that. And I want to take the mm -hmm. time to feel that I'm loving my melanin. So if they're not getting it right, kudos that you're trying. But right now, until March 1st, Corel <laughs> is not going to take the time because it's taking away the time for what this month is really supposed to be doing. And I'm going to be loving all my brothers and sisters and they's and the non-binary celebrating our melanin chocolate goodness. <laughs> all right now. Yeah, yeah.
I, I hear what you're saying. Um, actually, I hear what both of you guys are saying. I, I kind of feel like as long as we've got people that are, you know, kind of like in the spirit of Black Lives, you know, um, whether they're, you know, talking about a Black person that's in their life or, you know, they're talking about Harriet Tubman or whatever, I feel like as long as, you know, we're taking, people are taking the opportunity to amplify Black voices black, and black, black Lives this month, that's cool. I'd be really curious. <laughs> I'd just be really curious to see the momentum outside of this month because, you know, it's already only 28 days. It's a, a <laughs> handful, a handful of days, a handful of weeks um, for us to kind of get this in. But, you know, Black Lives Matter all days, all time. So, you know, I'm just like, we, we had that, we had a lot of momentum in the, the summer going into the, the, into the fall. You know, we had this whole political season that needed to kind of like, you know, do, do the work that it needed to do, which thankfully that's happened. And now like on the heels of that, <laughs> on the, it's like, it's one right after the next. Now we're back into black history. So it's like, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen in March? Because at the end of the day, if black <clears throat> lives are mattering, they don't just matter in the month of February. I hope that we would continue that energy. So if you talk, if the only thing that you can talk about at this point is the one black friend that did something, you know, to help you to see the light or whatever, I want to see you keep talking about that one black friend in March. March. <laughs> <laughs> I, want you, I want you to, you know, like, don't just be like, okay, well, he's my Harriet Tubman. So the only time I'm going to talk about this person is in from February 1st to February 27th or 28th. Right. You know, like, keep that momentum. Right that part yeah, no, I, agree. Yeah. I just find myself struggling with not saying something just because like you said I think about outside of the month and I think they're not gonna say nothing then so right now while I have their attention to say something you know that's the only reason why I find myself wanting to speak up and be like attention all white folks <clears throat> you know on like, aisle one you will I, find I, martin luther king jr right <laughs> on aisle two <laughs> you'll find the shea cocoa butter right <laughs> on aisle three you can get your hair cut and buy your groceries thank you right. for coming today right. you know, like, <laughs> no that's so, true you know i just i don't know i just find myself being stuck in between a rock and a hard place because like you corral like February comes around and I just, I really want to live all up in it. But at the same time, I just be like, oh. They come to you to give, to get answers, which is, it's cool because they're at least comfortable maybe to learn and open a little bit. The windows open a little bit for the one to learn. And I'm normally in that same spot where you are at, Jarrell, where it's just like, mm -hmm. okay, they feel comfortable to ask me. They trust me to be able to provide them some clarity around something. Mm -hmm. But not this year. Don't ask Corel this year because well, that's not the spirit I'm in right now. I'm in the spirit <laughs> of literally solely celebrating. <laughs> it's like when dear white people um, said one of their characters, and they just retweeted this today and said, "When did I become the white whisperer? Don't they have Google? Like that absolutely. Hurts. Like Seriously. that's yeah. that's the whole mood. That. It'd be yeah. like." Damn, you can't just go and do this research for yourself. You have to go to a black a black person just to get some type of knowledge. And Twitter's like, doing it for you. Like Twitter, be on it. <laughs> go bitch, to Twitter. You, <laughs> I mean, the truth of the fact is, if you can take our culture off of TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, bitch, and and try to be Instagram famous or whatever the case is, you can do the set. Use the same fucking social media to to learn and educate yourself outside. Let of that our silhouette culture. challenge be a computer. Look up Google. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but uh, that kind of almost honestly leads into the Ask Auntie's question. So, what time is well, it? Oh, well, real ahead. quick, I just yeah. wanted to acknowledge the fact that um, that every year Black History Month has a theme. Yes. And this year's theme is the Black family, representation, identity, and diversity. And so the intention of this year is to really celebrate and honor the impact of Black families and and the, our our impact within our community. So. Um, white people and black people, <laughs> <laughs> this is an opportunity to really amplify those kinds of stories. So, um, you know, share frequently, honestly, openly about, you know, who you are, what your background is, where you come from, and all of those kinds of things, because this is the theme for this, this year's Black History. Who your mama is, who your daddy is, where they mm -hmm. stay at. <laughs> uh, what time is it? <laughs> Ask. Ask. Your, your auntie. auntie. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <Strike> <laughs> <pose>. <laughs> yes, darling. <laughs> um.
Um, this week's Ask Your Auntie's question is actually from me because <laughs> we're making this a blackity black uh, episode. Um, and, and it kind of came up to me in a, in a moment, like I like I've been on Clubhouse and just kind of hearing different folks' stories, and it sparked this question for me. And I just kind of wrote it down real quick before here, but it's just like so like when it comes to like sexuality, there's many people within the LGBTQIA plus community remember either a moment or a time where they're like, oh, I'm not like them. I'm not like the others. I might like this boy. Or I might like this girl or whatever it may be. Have you ever had a moment where you realized you were black? And I was trying to like think, and I was like, okay, I remember moments where like, oh, I remember liking that boy or, you know, and maybe not having the terminology of knowing I was gay. But then I was like, have I ever had a moment where I knew I was black? So I'm going to let you guys answer first. I definitely remember recognizing that I was gay, different, queer, liking boys, um, well before I knew anything about race. Um, the On the flip side, because uh, I, I was probably like four, I think, when I first started, like, I think I saw like the, not I think, I saw, <laughs> I saw the um, su- the first Superman movie, and then I oh, went home you saw and I had. Reeve in them briefs. I was like, oh, I just want to live in your crystal castle. I'll make you dinner. <laughs> I had a dream about this. He was flying around the world. I was cooking dinner, um, you know. But it wasn't a moment for me about realizing that I was a black. Um, and in that traditional sense, like it was like an aha moment. It was more of, I remember when I started going to school um, mm-hmm. and I was probably between maybe seven and eight and blackness was always part of family conversations. So it, I never really had like that aha, like, oh yeah, I'm black. You know, I always felt the otherness co- primarily coming from my queerness, but I always remember there always being, you know, blackness was always discussed as part of like, you know, they don't treat you like us. And, you know, you're, you have to work, you have to, you be, have to be twice as smart, you know, and, and twice as good and da, 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 da. Like, I remember all of those things, which then informed me about, you know, like just my blackness. Right. What about you, boo? Um, I don't know. Like for me, I I think I like kind of what you said, do I like, I, think I realized that I was into men or boys or different or whatever sooner than I realized I was black as well. Um, Just because growing up, everything was black, 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 you know, like the widest thing that we got to growing up was, what was his name? Is it Bono? No. mm -mm. Bono. <laughs> Not you too. <laughs> no, it was his... just that ba- John, the John Bon Jovi. Is that his name? John yes, Bon Jovi. John bon Jovi. <laughs> my mom was my mom was a a big fan of his. That was like the only white person that I knew for quite a while as far as white music. You know, but it wasn't until I was probably like 10 or 12 that I was like, oh, there are there are other people than black folks because it was just so black, you know, and Gary and, and you know, North side of Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and even in like an elementary school, like, you know, white people where I went to school were the minority, you know? So I grew up with such a diverse, you know, school of, you know, knowing about Viennese, um, you know, indigenous people, um, Somalians, like all sorts of different types of background. So I didn't really start understanding having that moment of, oh shit, you black until I started doing more of the white people sports. <laughs> and so like when I started being the only Negro at the pool doing swimming and diving and I'm like, oh right. shit, <laughs> you know, like that was the first, my first kind of like a speck of pepper in the sea of salt. That was right. easy. I could, oh, there go my mama right there. Not only can I hear her as, but I can see her because she stick out because she's the one black person, you know? And I think it would probably wasn't diving when, you know, one of the person was like, oh, you can swim? And I was like, 
okay, I must be real. Like, that's right. obviously a black thing, you know? And I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I have to think about it. Yeah, I'm black. I, I, I'm sure I stick out here. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that was probably the first time. It never bothered me. I never had any type of experience where it was just kind of like, <clears throat> it just, it, it, it affected me in a, in, a, in a certain way. It wasn't until coming out and being gay and actually being in gay spaces where I had a moment, I was like, Mm, I'm black mm -hmm. and that was more life-changing I felt like those moments as an adult were more kind of life-changing than when I noticed it when I was a kid right yeah like it, I so when I thought this question I couldn't think of a moment either there wasn't like a distinct moment in time where I was like ah I learned a lesson from someone calling me something blah blah, blah. and like it, it was just weird just growing up in a predominantly white space and I don't even know when I would have even been able to acknowledge it or know it was different because like going to school was like predominantly white but then like with my parents being pastors our church was predominantly black so like I knew of the distinctness of it but that was maybe just my norm that I didn't think anything of it and honestly I had made it all the way through almost to the end of my senior year in high school before someone in the school because like growing up in a small town I knew a lot of the same people growing up from like kindergarten all the way to senior year in high school. And senior year in high school was the first time I got called the, the N word by someone. And so I know that distinct marker, but mm -hmm. I, I knew I was black before then, but like, mm -hmm. it wasn't like troublesome as much, or I don't know what the word is, but I agree. Like I definitely knew more the markers of being gay and things like that and so that's just kind of interesting how like yeah. the sexuality part of it sticks out more than just like your, your race part of it both of mm -hmm. them you're born both you know born gay and black mm -hmm. but it's just interesting that the black part of me i don't remember a distinct marker and it literally was until one of my good friends uh bringing when his dad passed my dad went to the funeral and he gave a story that i didn't even know so they told at the, the funeral and like in you know in elementary school you do like the little different little plays and shit like that and especially at our school we did like plays every year in like grade school and my dad was sitting next to mr breen and uh my dad was like and they always joked it back and forth they like my dad's a jokester mr breen was a jokester and my dad was like oh which one's your kid and even though he knew but like we we're all dressed up and he's just like oh, there's Jason right there. And then Mr. Brain was like, which one's your kid? And here's Carell, like one of like the, I'm trying to think that year in school, probably might've been the only black kid in that grade that year. And so that was their kind of like little kiki ha ha kind of moment. But I'm sure they've had, my parents had moments where it might've, they knew what was occurring more than mm. we were growing up, you know? And I almost want to have a conversation with my dad and mom, just be like, were there moments that you guys shielded us away from potentially like racism and things that people were saying that we just didn't know because you just wanted us to have a quote unquote normal experience, especially for them mm -hmm. growing up in the deep South where they went to segregated schools where they didn't mm -hmm. have white friends. And my dad says to this day, he didn't have a white friend until he got his PhD at Iowa State. So like mid twenties, when you go like after you graduate college, <laughs> uh <-huh>. love deep <laughs> Georgia, went to an HBCU, then went to Iowa State where he's like, it's like the whitest of the white in Iowa, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting, like I'm sure they've had so many experiences that somehow they still didn't manage to dump that on us. And so that's why I kind of wanted to bring this up. I was like, am I abnormal that I don't have a distinct marker where I knew I was black just because it was just the norm? Like we went to Martin Luther King programs. We went, you know, so it was ingrained in our, my weekend week out, but I always just had these weird worlds where during the school day is predominantly white. And then mm -hmm. we're in church like five days a week and go, you leave school and go to church and it's predominantly black. And it was all normal. <laughs> if that makes sense i don't know so yeah i can say i definitely remember the first time a, a white person asked to touch my hair um mm -hmm. you know and that was probably another marker where i was just like okay i know i'm like the only black person in the room yeah. <laughs> right now and i would never forget tiffany in 2004 Ooh. she came up to me and she was like can i touch your hair and i was like uh what where and she touched it <laughs> she touched oh. it and then her reply was it feels like carpet and uh, I didn't know how to handle myself. 
And then she was just like, I'm going to call you Carpet Boy. Oh, no. So I kind of was just one of those moments where you're just like, I don't know how I should respond right now because this is some white ass shit <laughs> to wow. do and to say to someone. Um, so I just, you know, I just kindly walked away. And that was probably the last time I ever bit my motherfucking tongue. <laughs> so y'all can thank Tiffany for Auntie Hennessy. <laughs> thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> She then blossomed after that. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah, I remember yeah. in college because I had braids. So like even as long as my hair is now, it was way longer then and then chopped it off and now it grew back out, I guess. But um, I remember people wanting to touch the braids and things like that or, oh, Corel, throw it out. Let me see your fro. And that was like always a thing. And I was so adamant of not letting them see me with a fro because I I felt like that's what the, the steward, even though the cornrows and things like that might have been very stereotypical, but I just felt like that was a power giving them just to see me with a fro. And I, I, I did it literally my last weekend of college, like, cause I knew I had to get a re fresh braids for graduation. So I went out to the bars, maybe like that Thursday night or something like that, got it braided again Friday and graduated Saturday. That was the only time in college that people outside my like roommates saw me with an Afro because I felt like it wasn't, the way they were asking me wasn't to celebrate the Afro. It was more just because it was almost like a caricature of what yeah, a black person was supposed to look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so mm -hmm. I re distinctly throughout college when people, and, and, and I don't think they meant any ill behind it because mm -hmm. the people, they're, you know, good people, whatever. But I think that's still some of those minute micro things that yeah. I think a lot of white folks don't realize, especially when it comes to hair, mm -hmm. being called carpet boy and things like that, that they don't know they're doing at times. Yeah, it's almost like a black marker. Like they're almost a check to see how black you are. Right. You know, it's like, oh, like, are you like this? Right. Do you like this? Do you talk like this? Oh, so you're black, black. And it's like, yeah, yeah, oh, bitch, the, the color of my skin alone means I'm black, bitch. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need to fucking know. Like, that's all it takes to be black. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. right. But my skin makes more melanin. Simply that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was this week's actually auntie's question. Uh, continue to send your Ask Your Auntie questions, AYA at MinorityReport.com or DM us. Uh, we needed some fresh batches, by the way. Like, it's a new year. I'm sure some shit has popped off in 2021 <laughs> already. Right. So let us know. Uh, the questions and advice that you need uh, in 2021. <laughs> um, I don't know. We kind of almost hit everything in this episode already, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I think so. I feel like we're missing something. I There's too. the silhouette challenge, Golden Globes. Oh, oh yeah. The, yeah. The, and the NAACP. That's and the NAACP. Yes. Come on, keep us together. I keep didn't watch together. nothing. That like I saw the Golden Globe announcement, so I was like, "What? What, what is that?" <laughs> yeah, like, I, don't, I have no opinion one way or the other. Except there are a lot of white people shows nominated, and, and honestly, yeah. and I kid yeah. you not, I went and I were was literally looking at these. Like, I will Google the show and look at the freaking like the main cast. White, 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 uh -oh. white, white. The biggest thing that's upsetting to me is. You're gonna nominate Lovecraft Country for best drama series, but, but not nominate, not the, not nominate any of the actors or actresses right. for anything. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then what you wanna do is to hide it. You wanna push the narrative, which is great, by the way, about female directors getting a shine this year. And it's just like, come on now. Yeah. The only one I think on I now. saw was what Viola, Viola, and mm -hmm. um, and uh, Audra Day, which I want to see yeah. that the Billy Holiday mm -hmm. movie that's coming out. I yeah, I want to see that versus yeah. the United States. That's yeah, gonna look good. That, that looks good. That looks really good. But outside of that, I'm like, oh, and a uh, posthumous one uh, for um, uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yes, got nominated. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, but other than that, oh I was like, yeah, 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 for uh, um, my for Rainey's yeah. bottom, yeah, which wasn't that good, by the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was okay. yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was a. There's, it, there's those movies that are like cinematic adaptations of plays. Yeah, I find are really tough I agree. because oftentimes. 
you know, with the exception of, well, no, because that was a book. Yeah, with, so like, um, what was the, the movie that was, that had Denzel Washington and Viola Davis in? Oh, Fences. Oh, Fences. That was, that was nothing but dialogue. They sat and talked for 20 minutes, like just, <laughs> I mean, and you know, we know we can talk. Right. But they were sitting there having 25 minute dialogue, monologues with each other. You know, here's the, Viola Davis with snot running down her nose talking about I'm in the house cooking chitlins all the time and you have to be doing your stuff. And then here's, you know, Denzel Washington talking about it. It's just my point of it is, is and not to take away any of the, the accolades of those those things. It's just the translation of that to of the stage experience, which is much more intimate because you're just enveloped in all your feeling is the emotion of the dialogue. It's really hard to translate. And I and yeah. I it just read play to yeah. me. Like I'm sitting there thinking, why are y'all sitting down here in this basement basement having this conversation? Why can't you just leave? Right. Go to the go get a get, go get a soda pop. Like, exactly. Like why are you in all each other's business in this basement? If y'all not do like <laughs> <laughs> I agree. But then it was like good, you said but, but then you're like, oh, yep, it was a play. So that's literally what they had to do on stage. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, Viola killed it. Chadwick killed it. Like, they killed it. But I was like, Ooh, the way Viola's they were hyping character, it up. though? Oh, she oh killed, my it. God. Oh killed it. Oh, my God. When she, the knowledge nuggets that she was dropping in there, like, yeah. you oh, know, yeah. like yeah. how she was talking to people. And she's like, look, they, they not, they're not, I'm not singing anything. I'm not doing anything until they give anything. me this damn <laughs> Do That's they give true. Me this coke and they mm -hmm. and they give me this check. That was the <laughs> original "bitch better have my money" moment. Right. <laughs> Pay me what you owe me. <laughs> at that very end, when when um when she was leaving or whatever, and and they were being you know playing games with the money or whatever, she's like, "Well, mm -hmm. I didn't sign the release." Mm. I was like, "Bitch, oh, bad you better luck. let him have you better it. flex." That was a flex. Yo. I lived for it. <laughs> that, is so good. that is true. It did have moments like that, but overall, I, I think I hyped it? it up Ooh. so much. My head, because I was like, "Ooh, Viola, I love Viola." Then I was like, "Ooh, and Chad, but ooh, it's gonna be dope." And they were dope, but the entirety, oh, it just—I don't know—it just didn't. So that's why I'm scared about this Billy Holiday one now, because I'm like, "Okay, it looked good." But is it going to be another one of those moments where you're like, ah, oh, in theory, it should be good, but they just didn't execute it. <laughs> I don't know. It landed for me, honestly. Oh, did it? I, I, it landed for me. I, I thought watching it outside of how it looked, you know, I think they embody what they were trying to get across, you know, like that time was just different. How you represented yourself was completely different. How you moved, you know, like you, it was, it's not like how people talk today. And I thought they just did a good job at getting the story across in an authentic way for that time period. It didn't feel like I was watching people talk in 2021. Like I felt That's like true. they really did a good job of acting in that time period. So yeah. it like now whether, you know, like how the storyline was portrayed, I, I kind of agree in that part. I thought there was a little, uh, but the acting <laughs> overall, yeah. I think they did a great job of being like, you know, who they were as characters so yeah. i think that's one of the really great things about august wilson as a as a playwright um and if if you know anybody that has there's a there's a documentary and I just I just ping my memory there's a documentary on i believe netflix that um that is about the august wilson monologue I think it's like the monologue competition or something of that nature. I'll, I'll have to find it and and I'll, I'll share it or we'll share it through through um, socials. Uh, but it's phenomenal. But and one of the things that they're saying about you know August Wilson is that the way that he's able to write embodies truly embodies people that are so relatable. Like when you like when I was watching the movie, there are like people in my family like my old uncles, you know, or whatever. I was just like, yeah, I could see somebody talking like that. Or, you know, mm -hmm. just the way that the, like the guys in the, in the band were talking to each other, you know, it was just like, it was so relatable because mm -hmm. they, they would razz each other, you know, they would talk each other down. They would get, talk you into a frizzy and then, you know, say, oh shit, man, I'm just playing. And then just, just deflate the whole thing. You. And it was like, yeah. it's so 
part of our vernacular and it's so mm-hmm. nuanced. Yeah. Yeah. It is so really nuanced. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that was interesting was I, with Chas Mc, with that being Chas McBoseman's kind of like last on-screen performance, two things really stuck with me. One, I just couldn't believe how frail he looked, which yeah. was indicative of you know his his yeah. battle with cancer. And the other part of it was is that even though he had an interesting character arc, it was it seemed. I don't know. It just, it didn't seem like something that was Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman. It, did, it right. didn't seem like that would be the character that he would like want to vie after. And right. so that was a little, like, it was a little tough for me to kind of watch that. He played the hell out of it. Don't get oh, me wrong. Absolutely. but like, mm-hmm. Cause you hated him by the, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. I felt for him. And that one scene when he was talking about, you know, you know, what's God done for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And that scene when he was talking about, like, he ain't saved my mama, you know? Mm-hmm. He didn't do this for me. And it's just like, and as you know, and you think about it, like, while he's doing this, this man is fighting through cancer. He knows what's going on in him. He wow. knows what's going yeah. on, which yeah. is, and, he, and I'm sure he had to go to a real place. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he's had that same conversation, like, what is, you know, where his faith was tested, like, yeah. you know what's happening because as I'm going through this you know yeah. so like that part honestly I teared up on and I was just like I couldn't imagine having it to deliver that scene uh, was the uh, documentary was about like uh was it about folks like teenage finalists doing yes. monologue so it's yep. called uh giving voice there you go um giving it's on, voice. Netflix. on Netflix right yep. yeah yeah yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It just follows these teenagers that are young thespians that are learning the craft of of delivering, um, not just delivering monologues, but really embodying characters. And um, it's just it's really powerful when you see you know how they how they deliver um, you know these these really interesting monologues and the diversity of the kids that are on there. It's just, it's really powerful. So if you have an opportunity to watch that, that's definitely one to add to your list. Well, I mean, that's why I'm going to watch the NAACP awards. Cause I'm looking at these nominations. I'm like, okay, this is what I think I was watching this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going through this list. I'm like, okay, I saw that. Oh yeah. I remember that. Cause the mm-hmm. other shit. So the NAACP awards is out on three, uh, 327, March 27th. So make sure you support black, yeah. uh, like, owned award shows because we always get mad when they don't nominate our asses mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. we don't watch the NAACP where it's about our asses so mm-hmm. make sure you watch that but if you want to watch the Golden Globes it's on uh, February 28th as well so mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but yeah no I got some of these though I need the to Golden watch. Globes is, is the one where the Golden Globes is the one where they're all sitting at the round tables and they're getting drunk as fuck yeah. right that's yeah. that one, right? Yeah. yeah that, but I think it's just all virtual fun one. still this year. So I don't know how fun yeah. it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because be drunk at the crib. Because part of there are so Excellent. many. <laughs> there, <laughs> there are so many like memes and gifts that they that that one night gives in terms of celebrities because they just be drunk. As yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's hosted by Tina Fey and. Um, and Amy uh, Poehler. Amy, Amy Poehler again this year, and they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're funny. So I like we'll them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, uh, but yeah, black, <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna watch the NAACP. Hopefully, Audra <laughs> Viola wins at the Golden Globes, though. Like, yeah, like I hear everyone's talking about Audra in this movie. Like everyone's starting yeah. to like, it's like I'm seeing like uh, interviews boys. and articles about her performance in it, and it mm-hmm. looks like she like slimmed down in this movie too. If you've seen the trailer, because yeah. Audra was kind of like thicker. Yeah. And she's like pretty slim in this uh, the trailer. That trailer was everything. I'm not gonna I know, lie. That trailer. I, know. I was I was actually impatient after I saw that trailer. I said, I gotta wait how long? I know. Say what? She I just like looked good. She sounded good. Like the that. story behind it, everything. I was just like, bitch, I I need this. I just. And I isn't this. this her first like? Yeah. Like acting, mm-hmm. like yeah. first acting, like she she was not. She she doesn't picture herself at all as an actress, and she yeah. actually turned the role down um, at first because she was just like, "I'm not an actor. I'm right. I'm, a, I'm a performer. I'm a singer." But mm-hmm. uh, you know, apparently, you know, she was able to to pull out the essence of. And it's Lee know. Daniels that did it too, and I guess Lee Daniels didn't want Audra Day either. <laughs> Oh, and, really? they, and they made Lee sit with her. They're like, no, there's something about this Audra Day uh, girl, lady. 
um, that uh-huh. you need to check out. And so he was like, and I forget what interview, it might've been like CBS this morning or something like that, where he was like, I hate people telling me what to do, but I'm glad they told me to go check Audra Day because she's oh, literally okay. Billie Holiday. And I was like, okay, that's dope. So we'll see. Yeah. Usually I like Lee Daniel stuff. So is this the first, what, what is this? A, this is the first like feature film that he's put out at least mainstream since for a minute. Right. Oh, wow. I'm what trying to think of what one? else did he come out? Cause I mean, obviously there's precious, but I'm like, that like was so damn long that. ago. I think he did another one. What? Let's see. Here. Alexa. What movie was it? <laughs> Let me look at this up. Smithy. <laughs> right. Smithy. 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 Smith. I know that's what we're just going to start doing now. Right. Smithy. Smithy. Uh, he did. Oh, he did the butler. He did the butler. Yes, the butler. Yes, okay. that's right. Because yeah. my friend Coleman yeah. was in that right. too. So, yeah. yeah. yeah he did the butler. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Alexa, one. did y'all see that Amazon Super Bowl Come commercial? On, Michael B. Bitch. Oh, bitch. I mean, when, she said, when she said Alexa did the lights and that shirt came off, I was like, bitch, Alexa, I ain't mad at you. Water the yard. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, honey, are you watered the water? This it's getting it's getting awfully wet around here. <laughs> I know just that little voice he was doing. I was like, ooh, talk to me too. Alexa, lights on. And then when Alexa, he was in the bathtub on. reading right. to her, just yes, love oh. it. Then I imagine Ooh. that kiss. See, they should have saved that for the Super Bowl. Like they shouldn't have even gave that one. They should just surprise our asses Whoa. with that one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that was, that was a that was, oh yeah. That the, was like, su- like, <laughs> the Super Bowl was out this. So by the time this one Super Bowl would have been yesterday. So hopefully I just wait for Jasmine Sullivan. That's all I'm waiting for. And her. That's all mm-hmm. I want to see is and Lily the Open. Well, oh mean, yeah, and she's doing America the Beautiful. Mm-hmm. The weekend. I guess I like the weekend though. He's doing the I'll halftime show. I watch the weekend. I watch the weekend. So. Apparently he's coming out with new new music too. So oh, word. I wonder if he's gonna do that face. Me. That'd be interesting. You know, he's been rocking that that like surgically enhanced face. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't you get that whole good? narrative. This I'm, whole yeah, cycle. I'm trying to figure out that, nar- that narrative, but I have a feeling that somehow in the Super Bowl, it's going to be explained. To and a I, conclusion? I have a, yeah, I feel like he's made start like that, and then somehow it comes off, and then like new mu- he starts doing some type of new music. Like He knows how to make a hit, though. I will say yeah, that. He can't know how to make a hit. I, I <laughs> and he's an entertainer. Song, but he's I can't think of a single song that he's that he's come out with that I have not liked. Right? Like he's on mm-hmm. steady rotation for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He got that little Michael Jackson uh, timber in his voice. Mm-hmm. Like that. Yeah, like I mean, there's certain notes he hits. It. I'm like, it yeah. literally, he hits certain notes. I'm like, damn, that's like, mm-hmm. like that. Was, I feel like that's the song Michael would make today. <laughs> you know, like there's if he if like, he leaned wow. into like yeah if he leaned it more into like his R and B roots yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, so yeah, we'll see. But the game, I couldn't care less. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't care. Who is it again? It's Tampa Bay and the Chiefs, right? Yeah. So I guess maybe yeah. the, the Chiefs quarterback. He's... I'm going. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he's black. Yeah. So he's black. so that's who I'm going for. Yeah. <laughs> and I think his and I think the coach for the oh no the coach for the Bucks is black. Never oh, and there's that guy. one player too on the Chiefs, the white boy that's married to that black that black ooh, woman. He's, he's fine. fine. As fuck. He is. I know. A z- ooh, what is his fine. name? Hold ooh, on. Shit, Before man. we get out of here, community, <laughs> oh. we're gonna give you his name. <laughs> Mm. This motherfucker, hold mm, on. Mm, 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 and he'd be mm. like slick with it too. Bitch, he got the swag uh, and is... everything, bitch. Jeez. He just look, he'll punch a hole in, just ooh, like ooh, Travis ooh. Kelsey. There it is. Travis <laughs> yes, Kelsey. That he got man. the beard. He a little ginger too. And his mm. wife is chocolatey too. She's Awkward. pretty. <laughs> She's fine. Oh yeah. Oh yes. So yeah, I'm rooting for the Chiefs mm-hmm. then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I found uh, a reason to care. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look at uh Trey Song's little dangalang a little again. Not even little dangalang. It's a nice little size there, but uh, right. and uh, yeah, it's a little baseball bat. Is that? <laughs> 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 and then the big fallback. Anyway, batter community. up, batter up. Right. Yeah, no, oh, wow. Batter up. <laughs> now, see, I was scrolling through these pictures of um, Travis Kelsey. I was like, hmm. But then I saw this. And, and you I was saw like, one. Oh, <laughs> this one right yeah. here? I, I'm okay. telling you. I'm Shut telling you. Up. There's something about mm-hmm. that man. Apparently. You, you know he putting it down. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. put it down. down. You're going to fall in love. I'm putting put it down. down. You're going to fall in love. love. <laughs> mm. down mm-hmm. right the way I want it. Baby, baby. Maybe, maybe make, make him fall in love. love. <laughs> hey. oh, yeah. I know. That's right. Yeah. Uh, See, so look, Dewan's on board now. Right. He's scrolling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because... 
them first couple of picks, I was like, hmm, hmm, mm-hmm. don't do it. I, I'm dry. <laughs> now I'm like, hmm. Ooh, I'm, I'm lubricated. Oh, 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 she said follow. <laughs> right, right. He can get a follow. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord. Jesus. That's funny. All right. Well, community. She, look, she might not have to. <laughs> Go ahead. I was gonna say she might have she might have to crank out that sixty four ounce bottle of lube. <laughs> it's like what that what that motherfucking lube at? <laughs> she said, "Get my travel kit. Get my travel size. <laughs> I'm off to Tampa." <laughs> she got one for every room, <laughs> right? Exactly. Well, you know, she said it's already in the bag, so she stayed ready. So, Damn. right. <laughs> Community, wash your hands and your legs and your ass. Whip out the lube if you need to. (laughs) And we'll see you next week. (laughs) Bye, Bye, (laughs) y'all.